everyone, in today's video I'll explain about synapse and the types of synapse. Before we talk about synapse, let's see what's a neuron. A neuron is a nerve cell. The brain itself is made up of approximately 86 billion neurons. Neurons talk to each other across synapses. So a synapse is the junction between the axon of one neuron and dendrite of another, through which two neurons communicate. A presynaptic neuron is the nerve cell that carries a nerve impulse towards a synapse. A postsynaptic neuron carries the nerve impulse away from a synapse or an effector cell that responds to the impulse. Synapses are very much essential for homeostasis of information, for learning. Disruptions of synaptic communication can result in neurological disorders. Now we'll discuss about the first type of synapse, that is the electrical synapse. At an electrical synapse, two neurons are physically connected to one another through gap junctions. Here, the action potentials conduct directly between the plasma membranes of adjacent neurons through gap junctions. Each gap junction contains a hundred or so tubular connexons, which act like tunnels to connect the cytosol of two cells directly. As the ions flow from one cell to the next through connexons, the action potential spreads from cell to cell. Electrical synapses have two main advantages over chemical synapses and they are Electrical synapses provide faster communication Because the action potentials conduct directly through gap junctions electrical synapses are faster than chemical synapses Synchronization Electrical synapses can synchronize the activity of a group of neurons or muscle fibers. A large number of neurons or muscle fibers can produce action potentials in unison if they are connected by gap junctions. For example, the coordinated contraction of muscle fibers to produce a heartbeat or to move the foot through the GIT. Chemical synapses. Most synapses in the brain are chemical synapses. Here, the plasma membranes of presynaptic and postsynaptic neurons are closed but do not touch. They are separated by a synaptic cleft, which is about 20 to 50 nanometer, that is filled with interstitial fluid. And this is an indirect form of communication. That is, the communication occurs via the neurotransmitters. Now let us see the transmission of a signal across a chemical synapse. First of all, the nerve impulse reached the presynaptic neuron. And this impulse causes the opening of voltage-gated calcium channels. CA2 plus flows inwards and the concentration of calcium ions increases in the presynaptic end. So in the presynaptic end there are so many synaptic vesicles in which the neurotransmitters are stored and the calcium ions triggers the exocytosis of the synaptic vesicles. And hence, the neurotransmitter is released into the synaptic cleft. And the neurotransmitters now bind to the receptors in the postsynaptic neuron. The postsynaptic membrane has many 
ligand gated channels. And the binding of the neurotransmitters causes the opening of these ligand gated channels. This causes the influx of ions like sodium, potassium, etc. And depending on the influx of the type of ions, the postsynaptic potential produced may be depolarization or excitation or hyperpolarization, also known as inhibition. For example, opening of Na plus channels allows inflow of Na plus, which cause depolarization or excitation. And the opening of Cl minus or K plus channels cause hyperpolarization. Now the postsynaptic neuron receives the chemical signal and it generates a postsynaptic potential. So what is a synaptic delay? It is the time required for these processes to occur at chemical synapse. This is why chemical synapses relay signals more slowly than electrical synapses. And the synaptic delay is 0.5 milliseconds.